I don't have my mic on, so the audio is probably pretty bad, but I know you guys haven't seen Ramsey in a while, so here's the kitties. Unless you follow me on Instagram, because then it's like every single one of my stories. Oh, why you gotta hang out right here? Can I just lift you up? He just wants to sit on the ground. Don't let everyone see you. Look at how pretty you are. Okay. Now I'll actually like put on the audio, but um, yeah, there's a little Ramsey bonus. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Savannah Smiles. So recently I did a video called why I spend so much on groceries. And that was me reacting to CNBC's Why You Spend So Much at Trader Joe's. After I did that video, someone suggested I react to this video, which is called, let me look, Why Trader Joe's is so ridiculously cheap. Why can't I, Ramsey, honey, no, please, I'm trying to film. Okay, let's get right to it. Why is there cat hair all over my computer? Dinner is calling in a St. Louis suburb. Then you step into the grocery store and suddenly you're transported somewhere entirely different. Here the parking lots are never big enough. So this is a thing I have heard before that people say that the parking lots at Trader Joe's are really small. I've never experienced that because the one in the hometown where I grew up was in a mall parking lot. And then the one that Graham and I typically go to out in Culver City has like a big parking garage attached to it. So there's almost too much parking at that one. So I've seen that that's a thing. I just never really have experienced it. No, whatever. You've just entered the 15,000 square foot Californian Embassy, or more specifically, your neighborhood Trader Joe's. Is Trader Joe's just a California thing? Because I thought like they were all over. This can't be just a California thing because it wouldn't be really sad for everybody if that's just a California thing. Let me know down below. Have you been to a Trader Joe's outside of California? I'm pretty sure there are some in Nevada. I think. I mean, I have family out there and they know what Trader Joe's is, so. I hope, otherwise everyone's been missing out. It holds no sales, offers no coupons, has no loyalty program, no self-checkout, almost no advertising, no online ordering, and collects no customer data. Huh, okay, that's interesting. This started off with kind of bringing up the same points as the CNBC video, so this is the no coupons, no loyalty, no online ordering, but it kind of ventures off here where it's talking about there's no data collected, and there's no self-checkout because I don't think those were points brought up in the CNBC video. So I have a funny feeling this is gonna be similar, but then it's gonna kind of go whoop. So we'll see if it goes whoop. In case you're unfamiliar, Trader Joe's is a popular American specialty grocery store. Its devotees appreciate its cheap and wide variety of wine and diet or food restriction friendly choices. I gotta say this one nice thing about Trader Joe's, um, my aunt is actually, I believe she's celiac or she has a gluten intolerance. So it's really nice we know she's gonna come over, we can just go to Trader Joe's and get something that's really good and gluten free for everybody to enjoy or get the pita chips. That way she can do, you know, hummus and chips. I think pita is gluten free. I can't remember what we do exactly, but it's really nice for when we see my aunt because there's so many good options there. So yeah, I mean, it does cater to a wide variety of people. Now that I'm thinking about this, this probably is a California thing because, because I don't know anywhere else that has as many people who go on gluten free diets and vegan and vegetarian. It feels like everyone here has some kind of a diet they're on. It doesn't feel like an ordinary store because its aisles aren't repetitive rows of similar looking items. Yeah, I would agree. It seems like when you go into Trader Joe's, so for example, what's on the screen right now, you can see all the Cheerios and whatever. It's all kind of the same branding. When you go down the cereal aisle of a normal grocery store, it's all kind of similar boxes, very similar style. So you see the Cheerios, right? They're yellow with a little design in the middle. Then you see, I think they're Cocoa Puffs. If I'm wrong, I'm gonna put it here. But you see those and they're a brown box with a little thing in the middle and so it's just really repetitive and similar and you gotta sit there and really analyze which one you want. And with Trader Joe's I feel like you get you know, fun package designs, pretty pictures on it. There's all different colors. You're getting pita chips that are blue and there's pita chips that are green and it's just different. So yeah, it doesn't feel repetitive in there. Before opening the chain, its founder Joe Colombe had been on Disneyland's Jungle Ride. The titular Joe in supermarket lore is a sailor on the high seas. The walls, aisles, and floor are decorated in wooden tiki patterns. Hey, if the shot's a little bit different, that's because I'm dumb and let my memory card run out of space, so I had to restart this. 
So anyways, super, cool, super clean floors, something I definitely look at because I feel like if you're not gonna spend the time to clean your floors, what else isn't clean? There are almost no branded items. Around 80% of its products carry the Trader Joe's label with a unique package design and creative, often quirky name. I think the only thing I've ever noticed that has different labels is the wine. I don't think Trader Joe's makes a Trader Joe brand wine. I've seen liquor, but I haven't seen wine. I Usually it's the alcohol where I see the different labels. So yeah, I mean, you could just walk out and never see another label if you don't go into the alcohol section. And yet, in what might surprise even the most frequent customers, Trader Joe's owns no factories. It does not cook, build, or create its recipes. I'm curious to see too, is he gonna say that he goes to these brands and they tweak the recipes a little bit because that was proven in the last video when you went to the naked juice versus the their fruit juices. So let's see what happens on this. Trader Joe's gets to put its name on high quality, well-liked and pre-tested foods. The manufacturer, meanwhile, gets a new source of income from a customer who will buy regularly, in large quantities, and pay on delivery, rather than charging slotting fees like most grocers. I'm curious to know what a slotting fee is. Let's look this up. A slotting fee, slotting allowance, or pay to stay, or fixed trade spending fee is a fee charged to produce companies or manufacturers by supermarket distributors, retailers, in order to have their product placed on their shelves. This fee varies greatly depending on the product manufacturer and market conditions. So that would make sense if they wouldn't charge them a slotting fee if they're putting their own branding on it. And to buy in large quantities, for example, if they went to whoever makes Cheerios and said, hey, we're pretty much only gonna have three cereal types and we're gonna put yours in there and buy them more than a big grocery store would. I mean, it makes sense to me. Again, as I said in the last video, very ethical. While some of its products are genuinely exclusive, many are very slight modifications, different proportions, or even exact recreations of products available elsewhere. Okay, so he did mention it. I'm good, I'm glad to see. Again, it's not anything that I'm upset about. I'm cool with it. Meaning, awkwardly, you can compare prices directly. Its white cheddar macaroni, for example, was discovered to be identical to Annie's branded version. You know what's funny? Exactly the moment that popped up, I'm like, I bet you it's that bunny one. It's the exact same. That's so funny. I'm super curious though if the prices are better or worse at Trader Joe's. So let's. But at Trader Joe's, 50% cheaper. Okay, well that answers that. I mean, I'm guessing it's because of the large quantities thing and them putting their own branding along with no slotting fees that they would get a discount on it and then they could sell it for cheaper. Just my two cents. It also sells products suspiciously similar to wonderful pistachios, Naked Juice, Frito-Lay chips, and Stoffer's Animal Crackers. I thought they proved the Naked Juice, but maybe this guy didn't see it or maybe CNBC got that wrong. I don't know. Customers feel their shopping at a premium retailer like Whole Foods while getting generic brand prices is the best of both worlds. I would agree with that. You go to Trader Joe's and it's seen as an upper middle class grocery store, but it's better priced than Vaughn's or Ralph's, which is definitely a just kind of, I don't want to say great value, but it's not an expensive grocery. This is where the most people go to do the shopping. Whereas like Whole Foods, I feel like you got like a premium shopper there. Because each store sells only about 4,000 unique products compared to the average grocery store's 40,000, it meticulously manages inventory. Being a customer means constantly being disappointed as your favorite items are discontinued or go out of season. Maybe I've just been lucky with this, but I haven't had this happen a lot to me. One of my favorite things is there, and Graham and I mentioned this in an earlier video, we weren't gonna say where it was from. It's this popcorn. It's covered in caramel, like sea salt caramel, and then it's covered in dark chocolate. It's really good, it comes in a blue package with a little bear on it. I can't remember for the life of me right now what it's called, but that has been there for a while. The Parmesan Crisp have always been there since I was six or seven and I begged my mom to get them for me. I and mean, they're still there. I can go into any Trader Joe's and the Parmesan Crisps are right there. So maybe I just haven't been unlucky like that. The only things I've really seen come and go are the seasonal items, which makes sense. I'm not gonna get eggnog liqueur in April. Because why would I want eggnog right now? It's not the season for it, but 
maybe I've just been really lucky. And if any of the executives at Trader Joe's are watching this, please don't discontinue my Parmesan crisps. I love them and I live for them. The company began private labeling back in 1972. That's the original Pasadena store. That is the original Pasadena store. I swear that's the same one from the other video. And I'm gonna go there when all this is over and vlog it. I'm gonna do that for you guys. Not because I have an obsession with Trader Joe's, but just for you guys. I think that was a bad wink. I can't wink. I don't know. Since then, the company has expanded to over 500 stores across 42 states plus DC, with a strange omission of Hawaii. They don't have a Trader Joe's in Hawaii? That seems like... Maybe it's just too expensive to ship all that in and they can't keep it at those prices? I don't know. The brand harkens back to a simpler time, one with less technology. Its checkout stations have no conveyor belts, scales, or TV screens. And instead of a PA system, employees use a literal bell. Oh, I love that bell system. I can remember being with my mom little in a Trader Joe's grocery store. Um, not that Trader Joe's was little. Not that my mom was little, I was little. And listening to the bells and trying to figure out what they were trying to communicate. But yeah, I've been going to Trader Joe's like my whole life. So I love Trader Joe's. <laughs> It's a problem. And each store makes its own merchandising decisions. Oh, that's right. That's the other one I always see is the Cliff Bars. They have a lot of um, protein, snack bars, whatever you want to call them, that are other labels. Because I believe they have Kind Bars there too, which are not Trader Joe's label. So I forgot about those. I was thinking it was just the wine, but I was wrong. Perhaps most important, though, are its staff. Trader Joe's hires not based on skill, but personality. The crew gladly helps carry groceries to cars and are expressly told to drop everything when approached by a customer for any reason. I mean, I can't say that's wrong. There was one time right before Thanksgiving, I couldn't find the Brussels sprouts. And so somebody walked me over and said, oh shoot, they're out. And then went into the back and grabbed me one and came back. Even though they were in the middle of restocking, it was super crazy. I appreciate it. They do that. It's real. Together, all these quirks place Trader Joe's firmly in an unofficial family of oddly similar West Coast at heart brands with personality, along with companies like In-N-Out and Costco. I wouldn't say Costco is a brand with personality, but In-N-Out, yeah, you go there and it's definitely a certain type of person, it's a certain kind of service you expect, and a certain type of burger. Although I love Habit Burger way more than In-N-Out, it does have a certain feel to it that they have crafted very beautifully. All three have a borderline cult following, truly low prices. Each appeals to the kind of customer who has money but chooses to be frugal. Although Trader Joe's founder, Joe Colomb, died in February. Oh, oh poor Joe. That makes me sad. Poor Joe. <laughs> A moment of silence, like F's in the chat for Joe. And I'm not saying that ironically, but like F's in the chat. Poor Joe. Some would say it's largely a facade, that its food may not be as healthy as one would assume, that the company is not the pinnacle of environmentalism it would have you believe. That was a lot of my comments on my last video. It's not as environmentally Okay. My family would keep reusing paper bags more than we did plastic bags. Paper bags were any time that I needed to tote something to school, forgot my bag or had a bigger lunch, it went in a Trader Joe's bag. Everything went in a Trader Joe's bag and we'd keep reusing those same bags. So that's where my thought on it being more environmentally friendly was because that's a bag we'll keep reusing, reusing, reusing. And where we live by the ocean, a lot of the time those plastic bags end up right in the ocean because we're only a few miles, like it's taken up by the wind it's in the ocean. So in my mind, I was thinking, well, these paper bags don't do that. And if they were to hit the ocean, they'll, they'll degrade. They won't choke out something. Both of them have their drawbacks and both of them have their positives, I guess. But I had said too, I thought they were environmentally friendly because they'd always push the reusable bags. I always remember seeing those at the checkouts as a kid where I don't remember seeing it at Vons or Ralph's. I remember seeing people bring them in. And it seemed like people there were a little bit more conscious than other places. And that's why I said I thought it was more environmentally friendly. For better or worse, Trader Joe's succeeds because it exports California. No matter who you are or where you are, here everyone is friendly, everything is colorful, and life 
is simple. Okay, so my final thoughts on this video. Again, I still feel like Trader Joe's is extremely ethical in how they bring their prices down. Bringing their prices down by having these agreements with companies, by not charging them extra fees, and by buying in bulk, there's nothing, in my opinion, wrong with that. In terms of where they were talking about the employees, there's nothing wrong with choosing employees based on their merits that way because those are soft skills. Their customer interaction is soft skills that are very, very hard to learn. I think, in my opinion, it makes more sense for them to recruit employees like that because you can teach someone how to work a cash register. You can teach them how to stock shelves. You cannot teach them how to be a people person. Again, there's nothing wrong with this in my point of view. Again, like after this video, I expected maybe something to be brought up that'd be a little bit like, ah, about. I still feel like it's a very ethical brand that treats their employees well, that treats their customers well, and they all do it just by caring. No issues here. Maybe I'm saying this, because I am totally a Trader Joe's cult member, but there's nothing wrong with Trader Joe's. So that is my video. So comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on this. Am I a Trader Joe's cult member or are you one too? You know what? No. No, 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 we're gonna do something different. Comment your favorite thing down below to get from Trader Joe's. Just, just do it. Smash the YouTube algorithm for the like button. Subscribe to the smash button and yeah, I have my Amazon affiliate link down below if you wanted to help support this channel while also getting something you would have probably gotten for yourself anyways. Use that, I have my Amex Gold, so that way you get miles, I get miles. It's great for everybody involved. There's also my Robinhood link, so that way you get a few free stocks, I get a few free stocks, everybody's happy. So yeah, don't forget to end